For centuries, the Garden of Eden has remained one of the most mysterious and elusive places in human history. But recent discoveries have shed new light on this ancient paradise, revealing a terrifying truth that will shatter everything we thought we knew. According to the claims made in a documentary, an archaeologist working in the Church of the Holy Sepulchre in Jerusalem made a finding that may have led to the location of the Garden of Eden being discovered for good. Get ready to have your mind blown as we explore the shocking revelations about the Garden of Eden and what they mean for humanity today. Let's get started. Genesis, the first book of the Old Testament, is where Christians first learn about the biblical location known as the Garden of Eden. God made it so that the first humans, Adam and Eve, might live in a gorgeous and plentiful paradise. To them, God entrusted the care of the garden. According to the Bible, God created Adam from the dust of the earth and tasked him with tending and watching over the Garden of Eden. Then he made Adam a companion out of one of his ribs and handed her to him. The garden was claimed to be filled with trees that were both beautiful and edible. These trees included the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. God gave Adam and Eve free reign of the garden with one stipulation. They were not to partake of any fruit from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. By disobeying God's command and partaking of the fruit from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, they were expelled from Eden and caused the introduction of sin and death into the world. Ezekiel Eden is presumably a combination of two words, the Sumerian Eden, meaning plain, and the Akkadian word Edenu, a Sumerian loan word. Following the events described in Genesis's account of man's creation and subsequent fall, rivers began to flow from Eden to the east of Israel and eventually to the four corners of the world. In numerous cultural and religious contexts, the myth of Eden has been told and retold many times. Many people look at the Garden of Eden and feel sad about the world losing its innocence and happiness. The location of this garden is unclear. However, before we go into it, let's have a look at a couple of the hypotheses. There have been visible remnants of the Garden of Eden from the very beginning. According to the Holy Scriptures and traditional beliefs, man has been searching for a method to get back into the Garden of Eden ever since he was kicked out of the Paradise Garden. If it were discovered, it would lend credibility to the story of creation and provide strong evidence that the events recounted in the Bible took place as they are described in the Bible. Thankfully, a lot of people believe that it is still wandering about somewhere out there, simply hanging out and waiting to be found. After discovering a church in Jerusalem, archaeologist Jody Magnus discussed how she came to the realization that she possesses the solution in the documentary titled The Story of God, which was narrated by Morgan Freeman. Magnus discussed how she came to this realization after discovering a church in Jerusalem. It is widely held that Jesus of Nazareth was put to death and then resurrected at the site now known as the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, which is located in the old city of Jerusalem. This spot was once referred to as Calvary or Golgotha. This place is known as Golgotha after the nearby hill. Dr. Magnus revealed that it appears that the place in question serves as the burial site for Adam as well. In 2017, she remarked, Beneath the rock of Golgotha, the rocky outcrop on which Christians believe Jesus was crucified, the rock of Golgotha is the location where Christians believe Jesus was crucified. One way to think of the site where the presence of God dwells is in the Garden of Eden, which is also referred to as Paradise. Both names refer to the same place. Below you will locate the Adam Chapel, and there is a long-standing Christian tradition that connects this spot to Adam, the first man. This tradition dates back to the early church. This tale goes back to the early days of the Christian religion. It is stated that when Jesus was crucified on top of the rock that is above us, his blood seeped down through a split in the rock. This would have occurred after the crucifixion and Adam, the first man, was found buried deep in the grave. But after some of Jesus' blood had dripped onto him, he was resurrected from the dead, and Adam, the first man, was buried beneath, the Bible says. The Bible presents a picture that is diametrically opposed to this idea, which makes no sense. The book of Genesis mentions a number of rivers by their names, including Pishon, Kihon, Chedekel, and Ferat. These rivers were located near the garden. This lends credence to the idea that the garden was situated in what is today referred to as Iraq, which was then known as southern Mesopotamia. 
Despite this, Dr. Magnus walked her through how this can in fact provide credence to a theory that she has. After that, she continued by adding, Now the version that wound up in the book of Genesis appears to locate the Garden of Eden someplace in Mesopotamia. Nevertheless, I think that Adam had a particularly special connection to the city of Jerusalem. People's minds tend to conjure up images of the Garden of Eden, often referred to as paradise, as the site where the presence of God is ever-present. During the early centuries of Judaism and during the time of Jesus, it was believed that the presence of God had dwelt in the temple. As a result, Jerusalem was considered to be the Garden of Eden during those times. Dr. Magnus was asked whether or not she believed that the Garden of Eden is truly a metaphor for the beginning of life and is wherever the presence of God is. The question posed to Dr. Magnus was whether or not she believed this. Her reaction was, oh, absolutely, of course, which reflected her certainty. Adam was the first person, and the term man in Hebrew means Adam. Adam was the first person. Adam was the name of both the first woman and the first male. If you take the letter A out of the word, you are left with the word dam, which then translated from Hebrew to English means blood. When you take the word Adam and add an ah to the end of it, you get the word Adama, which means territory or land. Yet there are a few clues about its possible location that can be found in the Bible. According to the book of Genesis, the location of the Garden of Eden is described as being towards the direction of the east. In addition to this, it is widely held that the Garden of Eden was the origin of four rivers, the Tigris and the Euphrates being two of those rivers that we are familiar with today. As a consequence of this, there are some individuals who think that the garden can be found in the geographic region that is currently referred to as Iraq. After all, the rivers Tigris and Euphrates that we are familiar with today flow through Iraq, which is located responsible for the extinction of all life on Earth. It is not unreasonable to assume that such a massive geological catastrophe would leave its mark on the surface of the planet. This does not rule out the idea that the garden was ever found in Iraq at some point in the past. However, it does mean that it is no longer there. Furthermore, we are unable to find any evidence of its existence there because it was most likely buried beneath miles of sediment. Even if Eden existed until the time of Moses, which is around 1500 years after the flood, it is difficult for geologists to find any evidence of it now because it was destroyed by the flood. It is an extremely remote probability that geologists will uncover any proof of Eden but the possibility exists. But of the floods, it would almost likely be forced downward toward the mantle if a flood of biblical proportions were to sweep through the planet. For this reason, it would have to be situated somewhere in the subduction zone on the northeastern edge of the Arabian Plate in order for it to be there. However, the subduction zone is hidden beneath three miles of muck and sediment that were produced as a result of a major geological event. Others believe that the Garden of Eden was situated on the continent of Africa. It is thought to be the place where human civilization first began. If you examine a map of the East, this concept is amenable to investigation from a scientific point of view. The shocking finding that all modern humans could potentially trace their ancestry back to a population that lived in Africa between 150 and 200,000 years ago has been made by researchers. According to their findings, Botswana is the most plausible location for both the garden and the first appearance of Makgadi Gadi, expanded to the present-day borders of Namibia, Botswana, and Zimbabwe. Humans inhabited this region until environmental factors pushed them to move to a different climate zone. The disintegration of the lake led to the creation of wetlands. In the past, experts thought that the birthplace of humans may have been any one of several different locations spread over the continent. The researchers wanted to find evidence to support their claims, so they looked at the genetic material of people living in Namibia and South Africa, paying particular attention to the LO lineage. It is possible to trace the origin of the human population back to this ancestry more so than to any other known marker. Researchers were unable to zero in on nuclear DNA because it is a component that is passed. This was partly because not all DNA is the same. Instead, they were forced to focus solely on mitochondrial DNA in their investigation. Because mitochondrial DNA is transmitted from the mother and does not undergo recombination, 
it does not alter over many generations and is thus considered hereditary. This specific kind of DNA is required in order for researchers to arrive at reliable conclusions on a subject's maternal heritage. This research was conducted by Professor Vanessa Hayes of Sydney University and her team of other academics. As a consequence of their efforts, for the first time, the researchers were able to determine the precise location of our early ancestors. She also mentions that there appears to have been some sort of movement in which the people were separated into three distinct groups. The first group traveled northeast, the second group moved southwest, and the third group did not leave the homeland and has remained there till the present day. Scientists now have a better understanding of the Garden of Eden and its location according to a recent study that broke new ground. It is safe to say that Africa is the most plausible option for the location of the Garden of Eden, even though there are various hypotheses concerning the precise location of the Garden of Eden. Who knows? Maybe one day we'll be able to find it. Who knows? Even though some people want to believe the evidence that is shown by science, others are certain that God is the only person who is aware of the location of the Garden of Eden and that no one else knows it. After Adam and Eve sinned, God exiled them from Eden and stationed cherubim with flaming swords to the east of the garden as a barrier to prevent them from ever returning. Even if we find the garden today, we may never be able to enter it. Perhaps the mystery of Eden's first garden will remain unanswered forever. Nonetheless, it is a story that has been passed down from generation to generation and will be passed down for many years to come. That's all for the video today. We will be right back with more. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. Hit the notification bell to be notified when we upload new videos to the channel. Thank you so much for watching.